Hi guys, it's Saturday afternoon here in the Philippines, so it's time for us to do our second episode for this free-for-all weekend. And I decided to go with the 143rd James Bond car collection. This is a unique collection that you don't get to see every day. And I only have three of them to show you, but they made tons of these cars. I think there's a couple hundred of them in this series. It was like a sub subscription plan that carried on for a few years. Uh, actually, this one that I have here uh, with the magazines, I think was UK based. The other countries were offered these cars with a diorama. The diorama helped like tell the story. It was like a display case or display stand. The car would come on and it would help tell you, I guess, with your imagination. I like this one with the magazines a little better because you actually do get a story that you can read and it gives you a lot of background on the movie and a background on the car, so it's really cool. So the first one I have here is this Dodge Monaco, and you guys can understand why I kept this one being a Mopar, and as I said yesterday in the Mopar tag video, that I have been growing partial to these late 70s big bodied Mopars. And this one is really unique because this one actually has some body damage that they added to it to kind of give it some more detail of like maybe a chase scene from the movie. Uh, they also added a police officer inside behind the wheel driving. His hands are actually on the steering wheel if you guys can see that. Really cool. Um, and very nicely detailed with the San Francisco Police Department star on the door, car number 334, uh, the still rims with the poverty caps and emergency 911 on the door, nicely detailed front end area with the grill and headlights, marker lights, very nicely done car nice light bar. I think this car is originally made by a company called Neo, what I could find on Google, because on the base of these cars, they do not have any manufacturer's name on most of them. A couple of them still do, but a lot of them, they tried to eliminate the name because they wanted it to look like one series from the company, whoever made this James Bond series, which I'm not even sure of that. It may have been Universal Hobbies, but I'm not sure, but that's not who made this car. Uh, you can see here it says Dodge Monaco, scale 143rd, Universal Hobbies made in China. But this car supposedly is made by a company called Neo. Um, I know Green Light makes one now, but not when this car was released. And I think Green Light even borrows the casting from Neo. Uh, this car was released in this series back in 2009, as you can see here on the bottom where the copyright is here. And it is um, number 55, as you can see. So issue 55. So this series probably had started in probably 2005 and carried on for quite a few years. Um, and there's probably a couple hundred cars in this set. And here, as you can see, the table of contents, everything that they tell you about, the Monaco. Then they tell you about the movie and then also about what's coming up next and stuff. Here's a brief summary of the movie, the car that's they are in having in the spotlight in this episode or this issue I should say not episode but uh, here is a picture of it with all of the specs sorry guys I'm just trying to kind of rush through these magazines because if we look at every detail of it we'll be here for an hour on each car so really cool they tell you everything about the car then this is a scene from the movie and they tell you about that scene. Then there's side stories that they tell you about what they had to do to get it approved from the mayor to actually film there and do this scene. Then here's your movie poster, they call it. Uh, but it's probably not a car that was even in the movie. This is a Highway Patrol uh, issue Monaco, which is really cool without the markings on it. So you can take this out of the book and hang it on your wall if you wanted to. They may have done this in every issue. I'm not sure. And then here's some more brief movie history and a scene that they filmed on the Golden Gate Bridge. Side story about the blimp or the Zeppelin. And then some more stuff on the Monaco and why it was the cop car of the 70s. And then your brief 
uh, stats of the Monaco. Some other scene that was filmed for another movie they tell you about. And then they give you some more history on the movie, then tell you what is coming up next in issue 56, which would have been the Toyota Crown, which would have probably been a pretty cool one, too, to have. Uh, I think my buddy actually has that one, because when we bought all of these at a flea market, or swap meet, whatever you want to call it, he was with me, and we bought probably 30 or 40 of them all together, and I kept like 15 of them. So he's got a bunch of the British stuff and Japanese stuff. I kept predominantly the American stuff, but even some of that I've sold. But these ones I thought were the unique ones to keep. Now, this next one also, Chevy Bel Air, 70s Bel Air, they call it. I think it's based on a 75 Bel Air, uh, which would have been like one of the last years they used that name, Bel Air. Uh, because after, the, in 77, when they went to the new style, box style Impala and Caprices, they dropped that Bel Air nameplate. So that's one reason I thought that was cool to have. And here is the car. And this casting, I think, is based on a casting from a company called Atlas. Atlas makes this car in a lot of variants, which is cool. Even in the James Bond series, there's another one, because I used to have it. It was the Louisiana or Alabama State Police one. I just kept this one because it has that plain, everyday driver type of look with this metallic gold finish, the steel rims, poverty caps. And then it has a little guy inside driving this one, too, which is kind of cool. Detailed front end and... Nice bow tie in the grill, and then nice rear bumper and tail light detail. This one has a very primitive base. <laughs> There's no detail at all really on the chassis, and absolutely no name at all, not even about the Universal Studios. It just says Chevy Bel Air, 143rd made in China, so really nothing spectacular to look at on the base, but the car itself is really nice looking. And the magazine for this one, let's take a look at it. And this is issue 124. So as I said, they released a couple hundred of these cars. And as you remember, that other one was from 2009. So this magazine copyright is 2012. So this series went on for quite a while. And then here is the story of Live and Let Die the summary then they tell you about the Chevy Bel Air and that is your car in this issue and then they give you some more cut scenes and stuff like that then here is the car again like the Monaco with the spec sheet telling you about the car and the details and things like that uh, so really cool some stuff about James Bond and his bachelor pad. And then they also tell you some story about the Rolex watches that they wore in the movie and stuff like this. So really cool how they do like sub stories too inside this issues. It's kind of cool. Then here's your movie poster. But this one is a movie poster. So it has Bond and two of his Bond spy girls with him with the live and let die which is pretty cool. So as I said, that Monaco in the last book really wasn't even a car that would have been in the movie, I don't think. Uh, so then they have some other story. I black, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it, exploitation, <laughs> black exploitation, bond, something about that. So anyways, uh, they tell you a brief story about that and then they show you some other cars that were in the movie and some other scenes from the movie and then also uh another sub story with double identity then some more brief histories about the fallen icon and telling you i think they're telling you about the bel air name so this is like the story i was kind of briefly telling you about that this would have been the last year that you would have seen this name being used on a chevy so kind of sad to see it go away but this is kind of a milestone or iconic car to have the last bel air um then they tell you some more history about the car and 
some other story. I don't know if that's about the movie or the car than the specs of the car. Then some more movie facts. And then once again, the story about what's coming next and the Dodge Ram. And you know, that's one that I missed. I did not get the Dodge Ram. And if I did have that, I would have probably kept it. So that's pretty cool. I did not know that truck existed in this series. So that may be at 143rd that I may have to acquire if I do find it. Uh, as I said, though, I try to stay, stay away from them, but sometimes I can't resist if they're cool like that. So I saved the best one for last, in my opinion. I kind of have a thing for, as you, as you know, like utility vehicles, like wagons and such. But one of my favorites is the hearses. So this is one that I really had to have. I love this car. This is a 143rd uh, 1966 Cadillac hearse. And the casting is by Ixo. And this is one of the ones that does still have the manufacturer name on the base, which I was surprised to see. But very plain detail underneath. No detail at all, really, except for a muffler and tailpipe. But the body detail, on the other hand, is superb. It's very nice. Nice grill, front end, even the Cadillac emblem on the hood. Very, very nicely done. Um, the wheels and tires and such are okay. Uh, kind of lacking slight detail, but it does look like the one from the movie. So... That they kind of didn't have any white wall tires, a plain steel wheel. So, um, yeah, it, it kind of matches the one from the movie. And then the number, or the not the number, but the name in the window of the funeral home, Slumber. And all the trim, everything on this thing is accurate. Nicely done tail lights, everything. The curtains in the window. So, really cool car. And then the satin type black to mimic the vinyl. Even the trim that they put on the side, they did a great job with this car. So, really, really cool piece. Yeah, that's, like I said, probably the best one of all of these. Now, the magazine is pretty cool, too. So, let's take a look at this. This is from Diamonds Are Forever. And then... Opening thing, brief summary on the movie, and then they tell you about some of the stuff in about the car, and then your number, issue 88, and then, yeah, that's another thing, issue 88. So, issue 88 was out in 2010, so they must have been releasing more than just one a month, maybe two or three a month. Because as we've seen, issue 55 was in 2009. So maybe this series went on for like three or four years. So maybe it didn't start in 05. Maybe it was 08 or 09. Maybe. I'm not sure. But yeah, they kind of released 33 of them that we can see here within just a year. So next part, just like all the other ones, gives you a nice pick of this beautiful hearse. And the specs and other things about it. It's a really cool then they have this story going out with a bang. And then, once again, some side story about saying Bond Voyage. So, um, really cool how they do the little sub-stories. And then, here is your movie poster. Once again, this is the movie poster. Diamonds Are Forever with one of the actresses from the movie. And then... Once again, another scene in the movie, Welcome to Hell, and then some side stories of the changing face of somebody, Blofeld. And then they give you a car to die for. And then they tell you about all the specs and things of this Cadillac hearse. And then something else about Cadillac here, adding a touch of class. And actually, I think we've seen this one in the other movie magazine but anyways uh here are all the specs of the cadillac and then there is the last couple pages then jill st john the girl that is in the movie poster they tell you some stuff about her from this movie then they 
are telling you about your next car, which would have been a Ford Anglia in issue number 89. The Anglia from Harry Potter, it looks like. So that type of Anglia. If it would have been the type of Anglia from the late 40s, early 50s gasser, I'd be all over that. But I'm not such a fan of this Anglia from Harry Potter. So anyways, um, yeah, they did have a lot of cars in this series and a lot for everyone as you can see there's the angley in the cover for 89 so very cool uh series and as i said for a james bond fan these would have been a must have all of these cars and all of these magazines they may have even wanted to collect the ones with the dioramas because as i said sometimes the diorama helped tell the story the diorama sometimes like you would have a scene for example, there was a Mercedes from one of the movies that didn't have tires on it, but it was made this way because it was riding on the train tracks. It had little, like, train cart wheels on it. But if you just get that car sitting there like one of these with a magazine, you're going to think they forgot to give you a car with tires, or they forgot to put tires on your die cast or something. But when it's in this diorama, it's actually on a little train track, and you can see, okay, well, that's supposed to be this way. So some of these cars need the diorama because the way that they made them, but some of them don't. Some of them, like these, they are just cool-looking cars. And maybe the diorama may have helped tell the story of, like, how this damage was done. But, hey, even though... Um, I don't have the dios for these. I think the magazines are a great touch. Uh, so um, this is a really cool series, guys. If you're a James Bond fan, I would highly recommend to, you know, try to find these and collect them. They're really cool. Uh, so this is the video for today. This is the last one for this weekend. So we will be back on Monday. And Monday we're going to be doing some Hot Wheels premium trucks. And we have some car trucks from RLC. We have some car culture trucks and also a chase truck to unbox. So we'll be doing that on Monday. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have not subscribed yet, please remember to do so. Please give me a thumbs up and please share the video if you really did like it a lot. And then I will see you guys on Monday. So enjoy the rest of your weekend and thanks for watching.